Hey, welcome to another episode of GeekOutdoors.com. Now on my continuing series on making the move from Windows or Mac over to Linux, today I wanted to talk about saving money on Linux. So before I go forward, if you have not seen my original video on how to install VirtualBox and then install Linux Mint within VirtualBox, be sure to check it out in the description below. Now this episode, it's not really going to be anything technical, but what I really wanted to talk about is something that I think is often overlooked whenever people are thinking about comparing Windows versus Mac versus Linux. A lot of times when people compare these, they really get into the whole technical aspects of things or things such as open source versus closed source. And that's primarily something that I would say geeks and nerds are really interested in. But for the general public, that's not something that they really pay attention to. A lot of people just want something that is familiar to them and also that will work for what they need and really important that actually they can afford and that will actually make sense for them to spend money on. And that's something that I really think isn't talked about much when you are talking about Linux. And today, that's what I'm gonna be going over. So the first thing I wanna talk about is the actual cost of the operating system. Now, I'm gonna primarily just focus on Windows because you know I'm not a Mac user. I have not owned a Mac, and so I wouldn't be the best person to talk about that, okay? so. Windows, uh, as everybody pretty much can relate with, everybody has used Windows. I would say the 99% of the whole population has used Windows. So, more relatable there. So the first thing is that, as you know, Windows is not free. You have to buy it, okay? Whether you buy it pre-installed with your computer or you buy it separately. And if you buy it separately, the cost is going to start at $120, okay? So you can put that on a USB or you can download it. Well, it's actually 119, but you get the point. So this is actually only for uh, one machine. So that's only for a single machine. So if you wanted to put this copy of Windows on multiple machines uh, legally, then you obviously have to buy multiple uh, licenses. And there are different versions of Windows. There's the Pro and there's a home version. So the Pro starts at $200. So that is a cost that is already inherent in your buying a Windows machine. So obviously it's a lot cheaper for you to not buy it separately. But if you did need to buy it separately, there is a cost associated with it, okay? Now the other thing is Microsoft Office. Now for Office related stuff, I use LibreOffice, okay? And that is free and it's available on every single platform. So it is not necessary that you have to buy Office. However, the majority of people who do use Windows, they still use Microsoft Office. And with that being said, you have no longer have the option, as far as I can tell, uh, to actually buy Office one time and not ever have to pay again. Uh, now, like most companies, they have moved over to a subscription model. So in this case, you can either pay $7 a month or $70 per year to use Office okay so that is another cost okay now let's go ahead and move over to things that I use on a regular basis and these are things that the majority of people would use as well especially if they are creating content so the first thing I want to talk about is your screen recorder now I myself I use OBS okay um, primarily and OBS is freely available on every operating system uh, and obviously on Windows as well so this is not necessarily a cost however a lot of people also use Camtasia and that is two hundred dollars but honestly I only factors in there if you actually use Camtasia okay so a lot of people do use Camtasia but in my opinion this is um, an optional cost, so you could just use OBS, so that would be free. Now, the other thing that I wanna talk about is video editing. And this is something that everybody is gonna need when they are creating content. And Windows Movie Maker was free, um, and it is not bundled in with Windows 10. And so, I thought you could just still download it, but it seems like you can. It was part of the Windows Essentials 2012 suite and it just officially has been unsupported uh, as of January 10th 2017 
and I couldn't find a way to actually download this. Maybe you could still download it in other places, but this is on Microsoft's official site, and I thought you could download it. And before, I did see that you could download Windows Movie Maker, but I guess that's not the case anymore. Now, there are many uh, Windows uh, video editing programs, but I specifically want to focus on the ones that most people in general would use, and this is the one that I thought they could use, and it's free. Now, there is another one that is free, and I don't know if people really use this in windows it's avid mu and uh, this is also available on linux as well this is free but there's to my opinion there's really not many good free video editing options on windows that is featured you know fully featured you know go more than just the bare minimum basics okay now with that being said usually if you are going to be doing video editing on windows and you do not have windows movie maker and as of right now i don't know if you could even download it anymore from microsoft site it doesn't look like you can so that means you're going to have to go to paid options and some of the ones that i saw that are pretty popular at least for low cost is cyberlink's power director i love this software i actually use it on my phone they do have a mobile version and it starts at 70 dollars so i really do think that that is a really great price for a video editor but it isn't free so it goes all the way up to i guess 160 dollars if you wanted to but 70 dollars is the entry fee now there's another one by corel and there are so many others but basically um, for Windows, as far as I can see right now, there is really not good free video editing options that are actually featured enough to where you could do all your video editing on there, okay? You probably get more power out of the video editors out of your phone as well for some free video editors. Now, moving on, there are obviously really good paid options on Windows. So, Sony Vegas is one that is really made geared towards professionals, so that's $400. Um, and the same thing for Lightworks, and that's an outright license is about $440. And so I think a lot more people use Sony Vegas than they do uh, Lightworks. And of course, you could go to the big one, uh, which is Adobe Premiere. And just like Office, uh, the suite, you don't, can't buy the actual software outright. You now pay for a monthly service. Uh, if you want Adobe Premiere Pro, it starts at $20, and then uh, that can go up to a annual plan where you could pay ahead, where it's $240, okay? So these particular software that I'm talking about, these are the things that I would actually use, uh, that I use on a regular basis, and if I had to go back to Windows, I'm thinking about the cost that would be associated with it, okay? So if you actually look at just the upfront cost to using Windows, it's like unavoidable you know you're gonna have a lot of upfront costs however in the Linux world you know everything 99% of everything that most people will use they're free okay obviously the operating system is free um, your office suite you know LibreOffice you know it is available on Linux obviously that's free you know if you have to use office then obviously your only choice is to be on Windows or Mac but for the general people who don't use this like for business settings this will work okay um even if you're in business if you're not a microsoft office shop LibreOffice office will work and then for your video editing obviously i have really good options available open shot is windows movie maker plus and it is freely available and you could do a lot with this particular program a lot of which is not even available um, on Windows Movie Maker okay so and then if you wanted more medium to advanced video editing you have KDE you know it is a very fully featured video editor it has a lot of advanced techniques uh, I mean tools available such as key framing chroma key um, there is very little that this doesn't have and then uh, your screen recording, obviously you could use OBS or like I'm using here, simple screen recorder. So all of these things are freely available in Linux and there's so many more other programs available that are comparable or uh, better than their uh, counterparts in Windows 10. Now, this is with the understanding that these are the type of software I think that the majority of people would want to have on their Windows machine. And so this would cover everybody from a general user who just uses for web browsing to people who would use office applications for work and business, all the way to people who create content, video editing, you know, and um, audio editing as well. You know, you have Audacity, but there's also graphics programs. There's so many other things, but 
I just really wanted to cover the main general things that I think a lot of people would use coming from Windows. Now, with all of that being said, you know, there's also a cost associated with Windows for the long term, you know, uh, things such as licensing, uh, things such as antivirus programs, which most people don't think about. That is a long term cost, you know, things such as whenever your hardware is no longer supported by that version of Windows, for example, new CPUs that are coming out like AMD, the Ryzen or um, like either the KB Lakes or Skylake, you know, some processors will not be fully supported by Windows 10, you know, and future versions. So you also have to take that into account. So that's pretty much my episode today. I really wanted to focus on the costs uh, of Windows and even on Mac. If you are familiar with Mac, you know there are costs associated and that whenever you go to Linux, you are going to save so much money in so many different areas not only not only for your immediate upfront costs but also for the long term as well so if you had any thoughts on the costs associated with windows mac uh, versus linux please leave them in the comments area below and as always if you did get value out of these videos be sure to leave a like and subscribe and if you wanted to support my channel further you can do that at patreon.com forward slash geek outdoors and i will also have that information in the description area below as well thanks for watching see you in another episode thanks for checking out this episode and as always if you like these videos be sure to click on the subscribe button and for full written content audio content and additional geek stuff head over to geekoutdoors.com and i'll see you outdoors on the very next episode